Uh, I am Benny Dimas, DJ, producer, director, actor, um, all around entertainer, the people's VI ambassador, you know, as they would call me. Uh, you know, all around guy, man. By fourth grade, as 10 years old, um, I decided to get into the band because my best friend was in the band. You know. He was playing saxophone, but I really wanted to play drums. So I guess that's where I naturally came into learning how to be a producer as I got older. You know, music just ended up coming into play. Along with learning how to play the saxophone, my brother Francis, again, was already DJing. So from me looking at him and wanting to be like him at some point, uh, I seen, you know, how he was putting that needle to the records, you know, and I was like, man, that's something I want to learn how to do, you know? That light bulb moment for me, once I knew, okay, music was it, is after my second stint of college, uh, I went to North Dakota first, and then to Western Wyoming to play ball. But I had dislocated my arm, my right shoulder, um, playing ball back home. Um, went to school with the injury, re-injured it in school, and lost my scholarship off of it. Uh, during this time now, before I went away, I was DJing at Insomnia nightclub. So once I came back from Wyoming and I got back into DJing at Insomnia, um, Louis Trumbull, the owner, he decided now to start having a talent show night. And within this open mic set of people was a group called Two Equip. And at the time, Two Equip was, was rapping over other people's beats. So for me now as a DJ, I'm looking at the instrumentals that they're using on CDs. And I'm like, okay, well this beat can mix with this beat and this beat can mix with this beat. So I'm just gonna flow with these guys. When they were finished now, when the performance was finished, their father, Kibo, who was the management at the time, uh, he stepped to me and he was like, man, dude, that thing that you just now did, we've never had anybody do that for us before. You know, uh, we've always been looking for a DJ and you know, you'll be perfect for what we're doing. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm already back home from college, you know, no more basketball dreams, all that's done. And I decided, okay, cool, we're gonna, we're gonna rock, you know what I'm saying? And we ended up putting on a show, put a show together, and we performed down at Ryko Center, and the crowd went crazy for what we had, were able to put together, you know, the three of us collectively. And from then on, we just decided, yo, we're gonna really do this, you know? Um, from there, we had Ver Simmons and Pressure, who were also in the fold of what we were doing. I, we stuck everything into music, regardless of what. Everything was about too equipped and too extreme. So you had too equipped, in which was now Timothy, Tehran, and Benny. And then you had too extreme, which was uh, Tehran, Pressure, Ver Simmons, and another guy named Iggy. So, though, you know, but these were the two groups that we had, and we would just go around everywhere on the island performing, you know, singing songs doing, I mean, just regardless of what, it was all about the music for all of us. After we put out our second album, I suggested to all the guys, I said, man, listen, fellas, if we really feel that we are the top of it all, I mean, you, you know, aside from, to me, in my mind, aside from Daddy Friday at the time, there was nothing else besides us. That's how I felt. Went to Atlanta and we were like, this is it here. We ended up making things work, you know. Eventually things just started to slowly, slowly come around. Slowly started moving and we start doing some shows here and there and getting the word out, you know, and the word started really buzzing about, yo man, there's these island boys, man, they rap or sing or do reggae or something, you know, we don't really know what it is that they do, but man, when they hit the stage, pff, you have no choice but to look at these guys, you know what I mean? And that's how we ended up starting to get our name. The name was just out there. 
we would do open mic shows and we would win every single open mic that we would go to. You may not have understood what we were saying on the mic, but you couldn't deny that this, whatever this was, whatever I'm looking at is so over-talented, it shouldn't be here. I feel like doing the talent shows, we were pretty much grooming ourselves to become professionals. This, this is really what was happening. Those two years groomed us to become professionals in this industry. We ended up getting the opportunity to open for the clips and here comes this guy, comes to the club. Apparently the guys had met him before, you know. So the guys were like, yo, Benny, yo, this is the guy we were telling you about that we met at the studio. This is Akon, you know. And I'm like, oh, it's not okay, Akon, what's up? You know, we that, and we held on like this, and he's like, yo, I'm here for you. And I'm like, you here for me? <laughs> what, what do you mean, we don't even know each other, you know? He said, now nah, go ahead and do your show. When you finish, come back, we'll talk. So, okay, cool. We do the show. I come back to him. So it's me and the guys. And he's like, yo, man, I'm doing my music thing, you know? And I got some labels that's looking at me that may want to sign me, but I need a DJ and I want you to be my DJ. So I'm like, <laughs> What do you mean, you know? Because remember, this time now, he's not who he is now. He's like, yo, I've been hearing about you all around town, whatever the case is. And um, he says that he really needs a DJ to start doing some shows with him and stuff like that, you know? So you can really solidify what he's doing with these labels that's pretty much looking at him. So I was like, well, look, this is my first thing. Uh, you know, I pointed to the guys. I say, if we don't have any shows, if we don't have any practice, if we have absolutely nothing in the world to do that involves the three of us, I can do something with you. <laughs> and out of his mouth came, oh, I'll do it on your time. I, I was so right there. What ended up happening now is, you know, I'm with Akon now. So Locked Up is out song is like that song for during this time. Um, Akon's album comes out in June 2004. By this time we went from Locked Up, the next single was Ghetto, the next single was Lonely. So Lonely came out probably around August, September and when that happened, once Lonely came out, phew, we were gone. Like I'm representing for home. Regardless of what I'm doing, I'm going to find a way to represent for home. I'm now Akon's music director. Not only am I Akon's music director, but I'm pretty much the main guy that Akon corresponds with to have his show set. Now I'm able to do these same things. I mean, as far as putting shows together, I'm, I've put shows together for Chantel, for Melanie Fiona, for Kendrick Lamar, for Kanan, for I'm, I'm now going, I'm about to DJ on tour in Australia and Japan with TLC. You know, I mean, the, so much things has been able to come out from this, from, from sleeping on a couch in a recording studio to know where I'm at, you know what I'm saying? And, and um, I mean, look at Rock City too, you know, these guys writing records for Beyonce and Rihanna, Enrique Iglesias, Janet Jackson. We have carried the Virgin Islands all around the world, all around the world, you know? And again, maybe I have been the one to go around the world more so than anybody else, but physically, but the things that these guys have been able to do musically, you know, that's been around the world 10 times over and it's gonna be around the world for the rest of our lives. You know, for the hits that these guys have been able to make and, and I mean, you gotta be proud, man. <laughs>